There have been 27 school shootings this year alone, and we're not even halfway through the year. Hi there, my name is Brooks Gibbs. I'm a social psychologist that has been working with schools for the last 22 years. I got my start after the Columbine massacre in Littleton, Colorado, and I've been helping schools minimize aggression on campus and online. A lot of people have written me um, after the tragic Uvalde school shooting that just happened recently, and they've been asking, why does America lead the way in school violence? And the answer may not be what you think. Uh, simply put, we have cultivated a generation of victims. That is the problem here, as I can see it. And I've been studying this for a long time. You see, the worst acts of violence are committed by those who feel like victims. But I want to uh, explain to you uh, how we have cultivated a generation of victims. Um, and I believe it has been ushered in by the anti-bullying movement. Uh, let me ask you a question. I think you'll agree with me. Do we want our children to A, get easily upset by words or insults, or B, be unfazed by words or insults, A or B? Well, all of us, of course, would say B. But do you know the anti-bullying movement for the last 22 years since Columbine has dysfunctionally discipled children to believe that no one has the right to insult them or say mean words to them, that they should absolutely get upset. The old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Today, the phrase is, sticks and stones may break your bones and words scar for life. Words hurt, words wound, words kill. This generation, the generation of all these school shooters have been taught to enrage themselves, to have zero tolerance for someone being mean to them. We know, according to the Philadelphia uh, Inquirer, that the shooter of the Uvalde uh, tragedy uh, was called names. It says, Stephen Garcia, who considers himself Ramos' best friend in eighth grade, said Ramos didn't have it easy in school. He would get bullied hard, like bullied by a lot of people, Garcia said, over social media, over gaming, over everything. He was the nicest kid, the most shyest kid. He just needed to break out of his shell. One time he posted a photo of himself wearing black eyeliner, Garcia said, which brought on a slew of comments using derogatory term for a gay person. So there you go. We have reported evidence that this shooter had been bullied or ridiculed or called names ever since he was a child. And because he was most likely like this entire American culture, you know, in, in the youth, taught that you should have zero tolerance for verbal insult, he created a rigid, uh, a rigid demand that no one has the right to ridicule me. Let me ask you another question. Do we want our children to A, expect others to solve their social problems for them, or B, learn to solve their social problems on their own, A or B? Well, of course we would say B, but that's not what the anti-bullying movement teaches. The anti-bullying movement says that you are helpless to solve your social problems. Yeah, we could teach you calculus and other complicated concepts, but when it comes to social problems, you're too weak to learn how to apologize or to learn how to make a joke and take a joke about yourself or learn how to be unfazed by people's desire to psychologically dominate you through you know, criticism. We, we tell kids you're helpless and therefore just report it to the authorities. You're entitled to be rescued from any unwanted behavior. And by the way, that is the definition of bullying today. Any unwanted behavior. That's the definition that students and parents agree on. Educators don't. No, there has to be an imbalance of power intent to do harm, and it has to be repeated over time. That's what the legal documents say. But for all intents and purposes, the Western culture in America says any unwanted behavior is bullying, and bullying is against the law. Therefore, the government must intervene and solve my social problems for me. I, as a kid, do not have to do it, nor should I be expected to. That, I'm telling you right now, has been the message uh, communicated uh, over the last 22 years. Let me ask you another question. Do we want our children to A, demand that no one makes fun of their flaws, or B, understand that they are not perfect, to learn to take and make a joke about their flaws, A or B? Of course, B. We all know that we're not perfect and we have flaws. And when we have flaws, people might point it out and exaggerate it for a punchline. But the shooter, for example, succumbed to the same dumb philosophy of the anti-bullying movement that no one has the right to make fun of you or point out your flaws. You see, it says 
uh, in the Philadelphia Inquirer, it says, Ramos' cousin Mia said that she saw students mock his speech impediment when they attended middle school together. He'd brush it off in the moment, Mia said, but then he would complain to his grandmother that he didn't want to go back to school anymore. He wasn't very much of a social person after being bullied for the stutter, said Mia, who spoke on the condition that her last name not be used because her family doesn't want her to be associated with the massacre. I think he just didn't feel comfortable anymore at school. You see, when kids are taught that no one is, should make fun of you or point out any type of differentiation that you have, something that makes you different or abnormal, well, you, you believe it. And you say, I don't even want to go to school anymore. I can't go to school because I can't handle people ridiculing me. Let me ask you another question. A or B, do we want our children to explode in anger if they experience a push or a shove that does not cause pain? Or B, ignore a push or a shove that does not cause pain? We would all say B. The children are physical. Sports could be considered organized aggression. And of course you're gonna get a push or a shove. It doesn't mean they have to fight people. You don't, you don't have to escalate verbal assault into physical assault or verbal aggression to physical aggression. But the anti-bullying movement says you do. If someone pushes you, this is, you know, they have no right. You know, that's, that's physical assault, even if it's a, a brush or a shove. Consider what was reported by the Daily Mail concerning the shooter. It says, in his early childhood, friends claimed that he had been nicknamed Pelham, meaning bald in Spanish for his incredibly short hair. But in an apparent bid to leave those days behind, he began to grow it long. He then was branded an emo or, or alternative at school where he got into multiple fist fights before increasingly playing truant. So he took a verbal insult, like someone calling him bald, and he had a physical provocation, a push, a push, a punch, a punch, an assault, an assault. He... Uh, repaid uh, aggression, verbal aggression with physical aggression. Let me ask you one last question. Do we want our children to A, demand that everyone likes him and includes him in every social gathering? Or B, be content with a few friends that accept them and not seek the approval of everyone? Two months ago, the shooter posted an Instagram story in which he screamed at his mother who said she was trying to kick him out of their home. Uh, he posted videos on an Instagram where the cops were there and he'd call his mom a B word and said she wanted to kick him out. He'd be screaming and talking to his mom aggressively. So here his mother is trying to exclude him, but just like every other American kid who has been taught that we have zero tolerance for exclusion, he took that as a deep offense. And uh, not only was he excluded from groups at school, now he was excluded from his own mother whom he was actually verbally abusing. No wonder she wanted him out of the house. Um, but unfortunately, he had been taught to have zero tolerance for exclusion. So unfortunately, because of the anti-bullying movement in America that is leading the way, uh, many children today, they believe that they're entitled to a life in which no one is permitted to do or say anything to them that they don't like. They blame others for their own problems and feelings. They expect others to solve their social problems for them. They take themselves so serious that they don't tolerate anyone making fun of them. They get upset by minor physical actions that don't even hurt. They believe that it is good to inform the authorities on their peers. And so aggression increases on campus thanks to the anti-bullying movement whose whole purpose was to minimize aggression, yet in so doing, they created a culture of victims. It was the dumbest and most dangerous social experiment in American history. And that's why we have the mo most emotional, volatile, an emotionally and physically violent culture on earth compared to other cultures around the world. We're leading the way, and it is unfortunate. unfortunate. The philosophy of life being promoted today is sickening, and there is no school of psychology or philosophical thought that would endorse such a dysfunctional mindset. Consider what school psychologist Izzy Kalman says. He says, the philosophy of life being promoted today is you are entitled to live in a world without mean people. If people are mean to you, it has nothing to do with you, your behavior, or your attitudes. It's only because of them. It is not your responsibility to do anything to get people to stop being mean to you. Just inform the authorities when people are being mean to you, and the authorities will make them stop. What a foolish perspective. We need to stop with the irrational uh, anti-bullying uh, policies, procedures, and pseudo-psychological dogma. And we need to promote true social and emotional learning strategies that have been around for almost 100 years. 
strategies like it's not what people say to you that bothers you, but what you think about what they say to you. Ideas that the more demanding you are in your expectations of others, the more disturbed you'll be. The more you desire, the more you'll be disappointed. You need to regulate your expectations. You need to be unfazed by words or insult. Accept the fact that you might be excluded by some. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to return to the old school golden rule. Instead of demanding that people are nice when people are mean to you, don't treat them back mean. That's the way they're treating you. Treat them back the way you want to be treated, with kindness. Learn to be emotionally resilient and learn to be kind even to mean people. We're not teaching forgiveness. We're not teaching meekness. We're not teaching virtues. We're not teaching children to guard their heart. Therefore, they have issues. I'm going to say what I said earlier in the broadcast. The reason why children are so emotionally volatile is because they have not been taught how to adjust to a harsh reality. When they get what they don't want, or they don't get what they do want, it is the same spoiled brat syndrome that really does spoil an entire generation. Consider what the ancient literature and scripture says. It says in James 4, 1 through 2, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. When you're talking about gun control, you're talking about the kind of over, overarching term mental health, I, I ask that you think deeper. The reason why children are not mentally healthy is because we have taught them to be mentally ill.